<laughs> What's going on guys? Manchester United won, Christensen nil and um, it was a good game. It was a good game and I think I'm looking at it from the perspective of I'm starting to see the team take shape now. I'm starting to see Oli's um, philosophy, what he wants to do, um, how he wants to play etc etc and I'm quite happy with that. It was only 1-0 but we bossed the game. The goalkeeper was moving mad. He was moving like a throwback David De Gea. So um, it looks like it was a close game but it really wasn't. Um, to be completely honest, there's a lot of positives to take from it. Overall, I'm really happy. Like going off the first half, like McTominay bossed it. Bossed the first half. Sergio Biscuits where told man already he was just pulling strings in there. Um, he started in there with Matic. Matic is fucking dog shit. Like, I would terminate his contract. Like, I wouldn't even try and sell him because I think it's an insult to try and offer him to anyone at this point. Do you know what I mean? So, um, McTominay was doing well, hit the woodwork a few times, getting shots off. And obviously, in the youth team, he played a bit further um, forward. And you can tell that every time he got the ball near enough on the edge of the box or around the box, he wanted to get it out of his feet and hit it. Like, I don't have a problem with that. Um, he strikes the ball cleanly and... I just he looks like he's improving every game and he kind of strikes me as the player that puts in extra work um in training and do you know what I mean I can only see in him I can only see him improving like I obviously he's got a certain ceiling but I just think that he's going to be one of them intelligent players that are going to be probably important for us in the next 2 3 years well, going forward anyway like I think he's going to start to become an integral part of the team cuz that's what it's starting to look like don't have a problem with it, man. He's technically sound. He's a good athlete. He tries to keep it simple nine times out of ten. And he's not afraid to um, have a shot. So, all in all, super happy with McTominay. First half, he was probably... Well, he was the man of the match in the first half. I'll have to split it into um, two halves. And then we've got um, Rashford and Daniel James. That stood out to me. Their decision-making between the two of them, I tweeted. It's, it's championship level. Like, at best. Like, it's poor, isn't it? Like, um, it was a weak opposition in terms of they were allowed a lot of space. Um, and yeah, Rashford had a good shot that was saved by the goalkeeper. But his decision making and his final ball is is poor. So is Daniel James. Um, yeah, James is energetic. He presses well. Same with Rashford. Both got pace. But in the final third, the thing that separates us from a top team at present is how we convert the possession in dangerous areas into actually goal-scoring opportunities or goals. And with them two, we don't convert many of those opportunities into goal-scoring opportunities or goals. That will change when we bring in um, better quality, like everyone's seen the news today. Basically, um, Bruno and Maguire are in the bag and it's looking like the baller might be on his way as well. And if Bruno comes in, that means more chances get created, as well as having Pogba creating from deep. You've got Bruno creating from closer up, and then if the baller comes in, he'll probably play. He'll play in the interchanging front front line, and this guy is, yeah, he's a, he's mustard in it. Like it hasn't quite worked out for him at Juve. They don't really play a style, a system that will suit him, but like he'll be a hit if he comes to us. So I think if you improve the quality in this current system that Oli seems to to like the 4 2 3 one, I'm very happy with. Um, I think that we'll start to turn more of that pressure and attacking um, attacking intent into goals. Um, Martial in the nine looked very bright. I was very happy with that. Very happy with him. I've been saying forever that he's a number nine, so it's great to see that people are starting to kind of appreciate that. Same with Oli. Like there was a moment in the first half where he's backed into the defender, rolled him. And then got the shot off. And that back to goal, holding the ball up, linking it, rolling players and that. That's what proper number nines do. That's what Rashford doesn't offer us in that position. I still um, like him better coming from wide. Because he doesn't have the IQ and also like the cuteness to kind of feel your defender and roll them. That comes with knowing how to play centre forward. And as far as I'm concerned, in the youth team, Rashford wasn't a centre forward. So I think he's still learning the position. As much as he thinks he's a striker, 
like he doesn't know how to play the position like in his true form in it so like i'd like to see him playing from width because he does like to run at players he's got pace he can shoot from range and yeah i just think that his link up his link up and his spatial awareness is nowhere near as good as tony's so i think that there's room for both of them in the team but i'm happy that now we're seeing tony down the middle as opposed to rashford down the middle because i think it gives us um something different Wambasaka, again like faultless like we've just casually signed the best right back in the league and it's gone under the radar you know what i mean i know the scousers might have something to say about that but you know what yeah trent alexander might be better from set pieces but can't defend like um Wambasaka, not even close like if you're asking all the wing wingers in the league who would they rather play against Wambasaka or trent alexander they're picking trent alexander all day they are because you can't get past Wambasaka. this guy is it's ridiculous like it's literally like the plague i was saying um last season our right hand side with ashley young was so weak that it made our left hand side look decent and it, luke Shaw ended up getting player of the year because our right hand side was so bad but now when Basaka's come in and raised the level on the right hand side all of a sudden our left hand side looks like the weaker side now so do you know what i'm saying like <laughs> ashley young might have just got luke Shaw player of the season so um yeah, like there's there's not enough words to describe the impact that Wan Bissak has made. We've conceded one goal in preseason, and he's got a lot to do with that because he's just readdressed the balance of the team. Also, I was gonna save this for the second half because Pogba came on, but um, what I mentioned as well, and which was pointed out by um, the guy United Arena on Twitter. Um, if you don't follow United Arena, make sure you follow them. Like good friends of the United Stand channel, and they do all the stats. If you notice, Paul Pogba has been starting to play RCM with wan -Bissaka because wan is so good defensively that when Pogba does switch off occasionally or if he does lose discipline, you've got the cover of wan there. When Dallo plays right back, Pogba's moved across to left centre midfield where Ashley Young is because Ashley Young um, is more defensively disciplined than um, Dallo. So you have to big up Oli for that because that is a sick tactical adjustment that he's made in order to kind of protect Pogba and you need to protect Pogba because he's a free spirit there are going to be times where he does drive forward and he doesn't get back in time and um, it's good that the management have kind of seen that and um, tried to accommodate that so I, I doubt that's a coincidence I'm going to give Oli the benefit of the doubt and say that you know what that they've seen that and if so that that's fucking brilliant management um, brilliant management um, Luke Shaw, I don't know, it's getting to the point where, like, I'm tired of talking about it, minute because you lot seem to, the agenda is, oh, we've got worse players than Luke Shaw, so let's leave him alone, or it's our oh, ranch, you've got an agenda against Luke Shaw, but the funny thing is, when I was saying how shit he was last season, bare people were on my case saying, oh, yeah, well, he's the least of our worries, or, oh, no, look, see, he's player of the year, but now wan has come in, all you man that were on Luke Shaw's bum is hella quiet on Twitter because now you're seeing how shit he really is, bruv, compared to a real right back. That's at the standard that you need to be at to be at the club. Like, he's getting to the point where there's bare grass ahead of Luke Shaw and he's cutting back against Christensen. Like, if you don't have the confidence to drive into space against a team of that level, Lord help us in the Premier League, bruv. His most played pass is probably to the centre-back. And like, I uh, like, oh, Wan Bissaka is younger than him and is light years ahead of him. Light years ahead of him. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to stay too long on him anyway, man, because I'm tired. Um, second half, it was um, nil nil first half. Second half, Mason Greenwood and Tahith Chong looked very bright. Very bright, man. Like, I'm very, very happy with these guys. They play the right way, they play the United way, they're fearless, they're direct. They're technically very sound and they're not afraid to shoot, bruv. Like, Tahith Chong is like a throwback winger, almost in the Ryan Giggs mode, a mode without the added pace that Giggsy had. Chong's not slow, don't get me wrong, but he don't have the, the Giggsy pace. But he does have brilliant feet, um, great balance, and I like. It's very rare these days 
to not have inverted wingers to the point where when you see a left-footed player on the left-hand side, it's kind of strange. But I actually like it because it gives us it gives us something. Like, he got a, quite a few shots off on target today and it's easier for them to get the shots off quickly because he can open his body up and take the shot instead of having to touch the ball, come inside, and then you're coming inside onto the defender. Do you know what I mean? So that was the benefits of having him out there. Um, Mason done more in the half an hour that he was on than, than Rashi really did um, in the 60 he was on. Um, and loads of people mentioned that to me. I have to agree. Like, he's bright, man. There was one time where he touched the ball down the, down the outside of the defender and he's gassed him and then he's cutting in. And because he's both footed, he can cut in on the left and shoot or he can chop it, go down the outside and shoot on the right foot. And he's just a constant threat because you just don't know which way he's going to go. He's strong, he's quick. Like, them two are going to play a big part in the season, I would think, man. And I'm looking forward to seeing, um, seeing them develop, really, because... The future is actually bright. We've got a good crop of young players, like either coming up from the academy or just in terms of age that we're starting to build like a strong nucleus, a strong spine. And if Oli can keep all these guys together, then, do you know what I mean? When you look at the likes of McTominay, Rashford, Martial, Wambasaka, Luke Shaw, Dallo, Twanzebe, Greenwood, Chong, Pereira, Gomez... All these men are young. Who else have I missed? Um, even Lindelof's not too old. Um, I've definitely missed people, but you get where I'm going with this, guys. Um, it's a very strong nucleus, man. And even for a goalkeeper, David De Gea is not old. So we've got quite a lot of stability. And if these guys can be kept together, they can just grow and improve. Same goes for Paul Pogba as well. Like In the next two or three years, I said in the third season, is where I'm going to judge whether Oli's been a success or not. Um, if these men can be kept together for three years and then you bring in like a Jaden Sancho next season I'm starting to get excited about these squad of players man I am um, Dallow no we'll go for Fred first Fred come on I know there's a lot of mixed um, mixed thoughts about Fred but I'm a big fan of his I always have been he always tries to play the forward pass that's what I like about him he's very positive the opposite of sure. I think the main reason I don't like Luke Shaw is because he's a negative footballer, in it? And it shows a lack of confidence. And I don't like players that aren't confident. I hate this. You know when people say, oh, he's a confidence player? That just means he's shit to me, bruv. Because really, you should be confident in your ability all the time, bruv. Like, to play for Manchester United, you have to have that swagger, in it? You have to believe. If you don't believe in yourself and you don't have that swagger all the time, you're not a Manchester United player. Like... That is what I associate with being a United player, is having that fearlessness, having that swagger. So, like, to see Fred trying things, both feet, the guy can clap shots. He whipped a left-footed curler just um, past the post. And any foot it comes on, he's looking to open it up, slip someone in straight away. And not always the easy pass. Sometimes he will try and clip something. And even if it doesn't come off, like, he works hard to get the ball back. I don't mind players losing the ball, trying to play killer passes. I don't mind it, bruv. Do you know what I mean? The problem is when men are losing the ball in midfield, like Matic, where you're losing it, like in your own final third, trying to do a Cruyff turn or miscontrolling it, or you're fucking dillying and dillying and dallying and you're getting your pocket picked. That's what does my head in. Like, I don't mind players in the middle third trying to pick people out in the final third, trying to play um, a killer ball and they're not coming off. I know these days there's so many stat merchants out there. They're talking about completed passes and all these other things. But most of these guys with the 94%, 95%, 96% completed passes, you are passing five-yard five yard passes. It's that simple. So I don't mind Fred um, expressing himself. And I think that he's going to have a good season, man. From what we've seen in our big games, the Barcelonas, the um, PSGs, etc. Fred's been one of our best players. So there's definitely a player in there. So you look just need to hang in there, man, and have a bit of faith. Um, have a bit of faith in him. Dallo, come on, looking bright going forward. He's an absolute problem. Like I said it um, before, like I would look at him as a backup right back and also a right winger. Even more so, like Ashley Young can play right back as a backup as well. Like I like Dallo going forward because he whipped in a couple crosses today. 
and like flipping hell, Ruud van Nistelrooy or Robin van Persie would have loved him. They would have loved him. Like he's almost like a throwback right winger. Like I've compared him to Joaquin Sanchez before. Any man that know football properly, like when La Liga was popping, man know Joaquin Sanchez. Do you know what I mean? Similar to like, like a Sanchez to like a Figo kind of player. Like I'm not saying that he's as good as Luis Figo. I just mean in terms of the way they, they stand um, full backs up, drop the shoulder, step over, get it out the feet, whip it in. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's got that about him. And I just think that a throwback centre forward, even like when you see Mason start to play more centrally, like they're gonna they're gonna thrive off to that that kind of delivery, man. So I got a lot of time for Fred. A lot of fucking time for Fred. Axel Twanzebe, beautiful. Like when I look at the game, like there were so many um like the link up, the build up, everything was good. Do you know what I mean? Like I think United played well in general and it just lacked the quality but Twanzebe is special in it for me he's got it all in it he's got the potential to be the best center back at the club like he reminds me of Ledley King in in terms of his stature do you know what I'm saying like he's well built he's pacey he's very composed on the ball like there was an instance where um he's shielding the ball you know what I mean and he's dropped the shoulder stepped over it he's felt the man and he's gone over that's a young boy and he's playing with he's playing with that kind of intelligence. It shows you that his football IQs are already up there, innit? And a year with John John Terry would have done him some good. So um I'm looking forward to seeing how he develops. I hope he gets games. I hope he stays and he gets some Europa League football, some League Cup football, etc. Because we do have a lot of centre halves. I'd like to see a few leave. Um, it looks like Rojo's going to stay, but I'd like to see Damian leave. I haven't, we haven't really seen him feature, so I can assume he's leaving. Um, who else do we need to get rid of? I'm thinking we've got Jones, Smolin, um, Rojo, Bailly, Lindelof, Maguire's coming in. That's already six man. Do you know what I mean? So I don't know if we need seven centre-backs. But you never know, because injuries happen in football, innit? So... And with Jones and Smalling, them man are liable to get injured and buy is another fucking one with glass legs. So I guess he'll get his chance, man. But I'm excited about Axel. And he's another one to add to the to the list if I didn't mention him before. And last but not least, obviously my guy, Paul Pogba. Obviously, um the the reverse ball that he played to one matter for the penalty that he won that won the game. Talk to me, innit? Because I have put my neck on the line for this guy. When everyone was turning on Pogba, I refuse, innit? When man were just saying, oh, yeah, like, you love Pogba and this, that, and the other. Listen, like, I don't even know the guy personally. I just know a brilliant footballer when I see one, innit? And he, that is him. There's no one in world football that can pass like Paul Pogba. Nobody. Not one. Like, with both feet, Paul Pogba can pass long. He can pass short. He can finesse pass. He can do everything with both feet. There's no player in the game that can do that. I think the best passer of the ball, yeah, on their strong foot is probably Lionel Messi. Like, Lionel Messi could thread a needle from 40 fucking metres with his left peg, but he can't do it with his right. Pogba does it with his left foot and his right foot. Do you see what I'm saying? So, like, the guy is... He's, he's unbelievable. He's an unbelievable player. And um, the pass that he played, reverse pass... That he put enough backspin on it for it to slow down. Matt ain't got pace. And he's played it into Matt's pass. Matt has um, um, definitely nicked that penalty. I don't know how much contact was on there. There probably was a little bit of contact, but not enough. I think Matt was looking for it, but who cares, innit? Like, man, I got 10 goals, conceded one, and we got five Ws. That's all that matters. Matters. I didn't even mean that. But, um, yeah, um, he stuck that in beautifully. Good pen. And overall... I just think that you saw the difference in quality when Pogba came on because we had a lot of possession, but we didn't have the creativity. When teams play like a low block, we struggle. We did last season as well. When teams sit back, we find it very hard to break them open and create chances. Today, we did create chances. The goalkeeper played well. However, when you get a Bruno in there, as well as a Paul Pogba, you've now got two players that can play that killer pass, two players that can move people out. And then all of a sudden... Like, teams we were struggling to break down will start to break down. And that's why I said with Oli, I think that structurally, we're starting to see what he wants to do. He just, 
needs more quality and I think that Bruno gives you that. So I'm very excited for the next, what are we on? We're on Tuesday now. I'm very excited for the rest of the week, to be completely honest, because by Friday we could potentially have signed Bruno Fernandes and Harry Maguire. And then all of a sudden, yeah, we've conceded one goal in pre-season. Harry Maguire and um, Wan-Bissaka both have good injury records as well. If we can keep them man fit for the whole season, you can take away the uh, about 20 goals that we conceded last season. We're not going to concede those next season. That already technically puts us in the top four. Even if we scored the same amount of goals. Because we conceded too many goals. You see what I'm saying? And that's not a bad place to kind of start. Like defensively. Because you just got to think the individual errors that they've made. He's not going to have another season like that. So I'm confident. I always said that fourth for me should be the target for us next season. Given how far we finished off the top last season and also the recruitment process. And I stand by it. We could finish above that, but that's not that's not it for me. Do you know what I mean? If we finish fourth and we got the Europa League next season, I think that's a very successful season. And I think that's a season that we would have to be proud of given what Oli's had to work with. Um, and yeah, the ball up would just be the icing on the cake. And the fucked up thing is, remember... When Inter Milan tried to shake us down for that Croatian Mark Albrighton, man. Fucking Perisic. The man wanted 60 million for that guy, you know. And now they're trying to get rid of him and they can't get rid of him. No one wants him, the pussyos. So this is what happens. Lukaku was out there talking up Conte, saying, best manager in the world and all that shit. One second. Best manager in the world, yeah? Now you're going to end up at fucking Juve, bruv. That's what happens when you're moving all chatty patty, fam. But at the end of the day, I can't wait to see Ronaldo's face when he tries to do a 1-2 with Lukaku, bruv, and it goes fucking pear-shaped. So it would be beautiful if we could get the baller in, playing as one of them floating, fluid forward players. And then all of a sudden, if you've got them man in there, that's our best window that we've probably had it in my lifetime. In my lifetime, we wouldn't have had as good a window as that. If we get Wamba Saka, Maguire, Dabala and Bruno Fernandes, there's not even a comparable window to that because Manchester United in my life have had such a strong core of academy players. It's always been a window where we brought in one or two players, um, a few young prospects and then one big signing or something like that. There's never been a window where we've brought in four certified ballers at the same time. So I'm extremely excited. Um at the potential of what we could go into. And if we do sign all three of those guys, it changes everything. It changes the whole mood at Old Trafford. I'm glad I'm going to be at every game next season. Um, unlike last season, I was picking my matches. Obviously, the Mourinho thing where I boycotted for a bit. But I'm going to be at every game I can possibly be at. Like If I'm in the country, I'm going to be there, innit? Like, so, obviously, we're bringing you extra content on the United stand. And... I'm going to be bringing you more fan cams. I'm actually excited about going to the games next season because I feel like the football we're going to see is going to be a lot better than it has done. But let me know what you think in the comment section about all the topics I've touched on, the individual players, like the analysis, are there stuff that you've seen, are there players that you're particularly impressed um, with that I haven't mentioned, um, how are you feeling um, with how the current squad is now and how do you feel given the fact that we could sign three bad boy players? Like, have your expectations changed if we get them three man? Do you think that we should be aiming higher than fourth place? Like, just let me know how you guys are feeling. Obviously, keep it interactive, man. The comment section. And yeah, like everyone, I'd say just be positive, innit? Like, I'm being positive. Um, there's been a lot of question marks over Oli. In terms of his pedigree and that. And on paper, he's not the right man for the job. But I tell you what, like paper doesn't play football, in it. And right now, Oli, Oli's recruitment and the players that we've even been linked with it are the best set of players that I've seen of any manager. Like post-Ferguson. Like, we've been linked with some shit ballers. Like even the man, every man that we've been linked with that Oli's interested in, I can see why he wants him. Even Sean Longstaff, I can see why Oli wants him. Do you see what I'm saying? And that has not happened for a long time. So I'm back in Oli. Like, I'm just going to 
yeah, I'm I'm backing Oli, man. Like I'm backing Oli until I can physically see that he's not the man for the job. He's got my full support. Also, told man about duffel bag Ed, bruv. Do you know what I'm saying? Obviously, man's Deadwood and that. Ed Deadwood and that, bruv. But you know what? I always said, it's not that Ed doesn't back managers because Manchester United have spent money. Looking at the players that Oli's wanted, yeah? If Oli was given that 700 million three seasons ago or four seasons ago that we spent post Fergie, or even if we say if Oli was given the 400 million that um, Snoreen was given, yeah? Look at the kind of team we would have had. Because we could end up getting, we can end up getting the baller, Fernandez, uh, Maguire, and Wan Bissaka, all for about two hundred mil. For about two hundred mil, because Fernandez will cost up to sixty million, but we we won't pay sixty mil up front. We're probably going to end up paying twenty five to thirty million up front for Bruno Fernandez. That's all we're going to end up paying. Wan Bissaka was forty five million. Harry Maguire is going to cost £60 million up front, which is calm. Do you see what I'm saying? And the ball is going to cost €25 million Euros on top of Lukaku. So when you look at that, we could end up going... Um, we could end up finishing this window not even spending €200 million and getting four very good players. And that's brilliant business, man. So as much as people like to give Ed stick here, yeah, I'll, um, I'll give him stick where it's due, but more times I defend him because I don't believe... That it's his fault we don't get players. I think we don't get players because players don't want to play for us. It's just like Jadon Sancho. If Sancho wanted to come to Manchester United this season, Ed would have made it happen. Jerome Boateng, um, Mourinho wanted him. He didn't want to come to United. Like, had nothing to do with Ed Woodward. So, I think people are underestimating how unattractive it was to come and play for a manager like Mourinho. Or even a manager like Louis van Gaal. Because a lot of people aren't, don't really mesh well with his old school way of managing. So, duffel bag Ed. I think if he pulls these three more signings off, man need to lay off him. And we just need to get behind the team, guys. Make sure you smash the like button. Add up the socials. At Ransom Bands on Twitter and Instagram. Also, my Twitter. I think I'm like 200 away from 40k or something like that. So... If you ain't follow me on Twitter, make sure you follow me and give me a shout. And big up yourselves, guys, for supporting the content. There's plenty, plenty more to come. Spoke to Mark today. Um, United Stand FC got a game on Sunday. I'm going to be taking a more hands-on role with the coach in there. Got some good players coming in. And also, with me, Flex and Mark are meeting up on the 8th of August. Yeah, the same day as, as the United Stand 500k party to discuss... Loads of new shows that are going to be coming to the channel. So, don't worry. Like, we're not, we're not, we're not relaxing. We're not relaxing. You're going to get more content, more quality. And yeah, you got it all to look forward to. Big up yourselves. <laughs>